Hello, Internet. I'm finally making a video of my experience in the National Youth Band of Canada of 2016. It's been a while, and I need to get this done. First I'll talk about the audition process, and then I'll talk about my preparation once I got my music and everything. And then I'll mainly talk about actually going to Saskatoon for NYB. So for the audition process, it was basically just had to record yourself and send them a recorded audition. It didn't even have to be video, but it had to be submitted near the end of November, which is one of the busiest times of year for a university student because that's when you're finishing up final projects and preparing for finals and doing all that fun stuff. I finally ended up sending in my audition and I didn't think it was all that spectacular, but at least I did it. I did something. I submitted a thing so I tried. And I was like, well, maybe, maybe I'll get in, whatever. I found out in January that I got accepted to the National Youth Band, and then I had to make the decision whether or not I wanted to actually go, because it was in Saskatoon, and I live on PEI. That's expensive, because we had to pay a tuition fee of 400 and some dollars just as a participation thing for being able to stay on campus and whatever. And then on top of that, we had to pay for our travel and our meals. Plane tickets are expensive. I'm a university student. But I found a way to make it work because I really wanted to do it. So one of the ways I found a way to make it work was to apply for a travel bursary which is actually the reason I'm making this video. We have to submit a summary of what we traveled to do in order to get the bursary. And instead of doing just a boring old written summary, I figured I would make a video summary and I got approval to do that. So that is why I'm putting more effort into making a video instead of just writing up a page about what I did. So after I accepted being in the National Youth Band, and I was like, sure, I'll do it, then came the part of actually having to buy the plane tickets, which was scary. And the only ones I could find were for like 6 a.m. departure times, which was not ideal, but it's better to be really early than to be late for things, so I went with those ones. Then I just waited to hear what part I got and what music we would have to learn. Once I got my part and my music in April, it was a lot more real, and then I had to actually think about planning what I was going to pack, how I was going to practice between getting ready for music festival and doing National Youth Band and starting a new job! So that was a lot of new things to handle all at once. On top of just having to practice for National Youth Band, I found out that I was the principal clarinetist, which was a surprise to me. The music was pretty great. We got to play Ecstatic Waters, which is this cool thing with audio file recording stuff Okay, so I got the music, found out I was principal clarinetist, that was intimidating because it was my first year. Then the journey began to actually prepare, practice everything, get ready for a music festival on top of all that, and learn a bunch of computer things for the programming job that I was going to start the day after I got back from National Youth Band. So after auditioning, getting accepted, practicing, buying playing tickets, then I had to actually go to Saskatoon. I had to get up at 3 in the morning our time, which is like midnight in Saskatoon, got to my 6 a.m. flight, got to Saskatoon at like 9.30 their time, so I had already been up for over nine hours and it was only morning. The good thing was the transition in Toronto was really easy. This was also my first time flying alone ever. So that was a whole other adventure. Yeah, I got to Saskatoon. Luckily, Jim was there right away. I didn't have to look for him. He found me because I was carrying my clarinet case. So that was helpful, like a nice, easy identifier. It was really hot there the first day. It was like 27 degrees, 
and it was not hot when I left here, so I was dressed for the weather that I had here. That's what I had to get dressed in. Then when I got there, it was ridiculously warm, and that was the only really warm day of the whole week. The first day there, I got there ridiculously early. I was super tired. I was one of the first ones in the dorm area, so I had lots of time to just relax, set up my things. Then when my roommate got there, she also had colored hair, so that was fantastic. Then we had our first rehearsal that evening, when I had been pretty tired. And my clarinet case, I would locked it because I was traveling. Usually I don't lock it. It was really hot, but my keys were in my jacket. I did not take my jacket to the rehearsal space. Guess who was running back to the dorms in 27 degree heat? Yeah. I got back to the rehearsal space, sat down, had everything set up, and it was really, really hot because I just ran there and the building was warm too, so I had sweat dripping down my face. I was like, I really hope there's no hair dye dripping down my face with this sweat. But as soon as we started rehearsing, I just stopped worrying about everything because I finally got to a part of this journey that felt like home. I got to play music, which was what I went there for, and it was just so nice to settle in and be like, yeah, this is what I came here for. Doesn't matter that I had to just run across this huge campus. I say huge because I'm from PEI. I go to UPEI. It's really tiny compared to the university in Saskatoon. So that was, yeah. I had to run there. I had to run back. It was really hot. But then it was nice to just start doing what we went there for. And yeah, music is really cool like that. The conductor that we had, Jason Kasler, he was amazing. So it was just a nice atmosphere of relaxed people, most of us really tired from traveling, and then we just got to delve into the music. And it wasn't an easy rehearsal, because we didn't have time to take it easy, because we only had three days of rehearsal before we started our performances. So we rehearsed, for three hours that evening, and then we had little icebreaker games because we were from all across the country, and we didn't really know each other. Some people knew each other, but a lot of us didn't know very many people. So that was nice to get to know everyone, but really I just wanted to go to bed by that point. So then I got to go to bed. That was nice. On the second day, when we got up and went to breakfast, that was when everything became magical, because I realized that the breakfast that was included with our dorms was fantastic. There was pancakes, there was waffles, there was bacon, there was hash browns, and it was all like really good things too. Not that stuff that's like pre-made and then it's obviously pre-made and it's just bad. There was also whipped cream and fruit to put on things, which was great, and a bowl of bananas. One of the things that I was worried about because you need a Bananas are super great for nerves and stress, and I rely on them for when I have to perform, ever. So I was like, really hope that there's bananas included in breakfast, and there was. It was great. And the coffee wasn't terrible. It was really good coffee. So that was also, it was just such a good breakfast. And the knowledge that I was going to be able to have that every day for the week was amazing, because I knew I wouldn't be able to afford the time or money for decent meals for lunch or supper. So we got really good breakfast, and that was great. Then we had a whole day of rehearsal, which was, again, it was fun, it was intense. It's what we came there for, so that's what we were there to do, and it was great. And I just really love to rehearse in a group. It's fun. It's a lot less stressful than rehearsing on your own, for me anyway, because you get to like, listen to all the other parts. You're not just focused on yourself. So that's really nice to hear all the amazing musicians that you get to work with. Dr. Kasler was amazing at keeping our spirits up and making, you know, those awkward little conductor jokes that, like, every good conductor says those really cheesy jokes. 
and they're great. I love that. So we had a fun full day of rehearsals, followed by the next day was basically the same. Just rehearsed all day long. So we had two full days of rehearsals. <laughs> got to have three full days of performances and long bus rides in the prairies. So <laughs> I might put some of that footage in. I just took videos because I was like, this is really flat. I should document this <laughs> because I'm used to the rolling hills on little old PEI. But it's pretty though, because I don't know, some kind of thing about having that much space is kind of cool. In a way, the sky looked bigger. So Wednesday was our first day of performances. I got there on Sunday. We rehearsed Monday and Tuesday. And then Wednesday, we had a concert in the morning and a concert in the afternoon. We had the evening off. Both of the concerts on the first day of performance were in Saskatoon, so we didn't have to drive far. So that was intense because it was our first performances but it was probably the most laid-back performance day of all of them. The second day we had a performance in the afternoon and a performance in the evening. And I'm looking down because I have my itinerary in front of me. The afternoon performance on the second day was in North Battleford, and so was the, af the evening one. So we just stayed in North Battleford and had our meals there. Then we got back to Saskatoon and went to bed. Well. Some of us went to bed. I went to bed. <laughs> On the third day of performances, we had a performance in the morning, a performance in the afternoon, and a performance in the evening. And that was a lot. So the morning and afternoon performances were in Regina, which was a two to three hour drive away, I think. So that was a lot of driving and flatness. <laughs> So that was a lot of driving in one day, along with three performances. And there was a lot of rushing between things because we had to make time for travel time and meal time. And it was a very busy day. It was really fun. So we got to do those performances and then we were done. It was just three days of performing and then we were just done with that repertoire that we were so intensely invested in, and it was kind of weird. So after two full days of rehearsals, three full days of performances, then we got one day of adventuring in Saskatoon. We got to adventure through downtown Saskatoon, the bus dropped us off, and we just got to walk wherever we wanted. A local, luckily, was in the band and he just volunteered to guide us around and he was really nice. He just looked after us. He made sure that he knew where we were so that none of us would get separated and lost. It was really sweet. So he took us to the farmer's market because that's really a good thing to do. Anywhere you travel to check out local things, just go to a farmer's market. It's great. And we got to walk along the... there's a little boardwalk type thing by the river, which was really weird for me because I'm on PEI and Anytime I see a big body of water, I just expect the ocean to be around the corner. And there wasn't, because I was in Saskatoon. It was just a really big river. And that was kind of weird for me to just get my head around. Like, no, the ocean is not super close at all. So we got to walk around Saskatoon. And then we went to this really great place for lunch. It was a crepe place. It was delicious. It was by the farmer's market. We ran into my roommate's parents, and then they just like paid for my meal, which was amazing. And of course, while we were all eating together, we got to talking. And since they spent some time on PEI, we ended up knowing a few people in common, which is like really stereotypical Islander thing. It's like, wow, the world is small. And it was just a really fun little meal. I got to have a nice little family meal with a different family halfway across the country. That was cool. So after our adventuring through Saskatoon, one of the members of the band actually 
put on another recital. I don't know how he managed to do that. He was playing saxophone in NYB, but then he played piano in this little recital. It was in a nice little church and it was really cute. So most of us went to that after wandering around the city. So the recital was him and a former NYB member on trumpet. And that was, it was a really nice recital. It was a nice way to end the week. After that, we went to a country club for supper, which is really, it was cute. It was a little barbecue outside. It was really nice out. It was, we were so lucky that that was like the one sunny, nice day apart from the first day that was really, really hot. It rained a lot of the other days. The food was really great at the country club. And then we got to have a little bonfire. We got to roast marshmallows. It was really fun because we were all just sitting around this big fire roasting marshmallows at this country club. But then it got really buggy and that was a little less fun. And then we left and went back to our rooms and... Oh, no, we didn't go back and chill. We went back and we had to do NYB Live, which is a tradition with NYB. They have a little variety show at the end of the week. So along with practicing all of the music for NYB, quite a few people put together little things that are just a little more fun. The clarinet section has a tradition of doing pieces arranged by this person who used to be in NYB. I got to be part of that tradition in my one year in NYB. I might go back next year, but probably not because it's expensive. But next year would be my last chance to do it. This year the arrangement for the clarinets was a Undertale theme medley. It was really fun to play. It was just really fun and it was nice to get together as a section and practice that in our rare moments of free time. That we had. It was fun, it was a nice little chill concert. So right after the NYB Live concert, then we had to gather in this other room for little fun awards that were being handed out. Like each person gets an award based on something funny they did or anything at all really. But I had to leave that early because by that time it was after midnight and my flight was at six in the morning so i had to leave early with the conductor jason kasler we both had to get our awards first and then we had to leave right away we couldn't stick around because <laughs> we needed some kind of sleep i think i got an hour of sleep that night and instead of having jim drive me to the airport i actually just ended up taking a taxi with Jason, which was nice because then he got to show me around the Saskatoon airport so I wasn't a poor little lost person who was groggy from one hour of sleep not knowing where to go. The Tim's wasn't even open when we went in the airport. I couldn't even have coffee. It was good that I didn't have coffee because I needed to sleep on the plane. So I eventually got on the plane and I came home and then I had supper with my family and it was nice. So it was a pretty great week. I got to travel on my own and I got to meet some amazing musicians from across the country. And it's not like you're just meeting a bunch of professional musicians, which would also be really cool, but it's nice to meet musicians that are your own age so you can talk to them about just life and stuff, like they're doing just what you're doing. Some of them aren't. Some of them are doing completely different degrees. Nothing to do with music, but they're just amazing musicians and they got in anyway, so that was really cool. It's really nice to play music with people, especially with a lot of people you don't know, because then you manage to connect, and it's just really cool how music can connect people. I think that's everything I wanted to say, and if I remember anything else, I'll either add annotations or put stuff in the description box. That's just about it. Bye!